All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday night. It's 9.03, and that means it's time for the best thing to happen all week, Dino 101. If this is your first time here, sincerely welcome. We're very glad you're here. If this is not your first time here, welcome back, you fucking weirdos. Tonight, we are talking all about the Bone Wars, inarguably the most contentious period in paleontology ever. We have a very special guest expert from Dinosaur National Monument to help us talk about that. We'll get to the one, the only, Rebecca Hunt Foster soon, but first... We have some very special rules we must go over. This is an adult-only engagement. And to do that, uh, I want to introduce the the jelly to my peanut butter. I don't know. The, <laughs> a woman who's been coming out of her cave, and she's doing just fine. Ladies and gentlemen, Christina Gustavich. <laughs> Air horn noises. Go ahead. What yeah, are, give us the important stuff. Tell us the important stuff. What's up? Welcome or welcome back to Dino 101. Uh, this is for grown-ups. And it is as interactive as you want it to be. So anything that's about to happen, including drinking adult beverages, uh, do it to the extent that you like. So uh, tonight we are recording. If you don't want your face to be part of that, you can turn your camera off, go down there. Uh, something else down in that area of your screen is the chat feature. We love to see the chat pop in. So if you have questions for us, for our guestpert, Send them to the chat, and if we don't get to them right away, I'm keeping a tab as best I can for Q&A time that will come at the end. So, here are some fun rules for the grown-ups, which at this point should be everyone until the kids go to bed, because here are the drinking rules. If you hear anything about birds, because birds are dinosaurs, you will take a drink. Birds. If you hear any of us make a dad joke, including your friends in the chat, they say something corny, groany, take a sip. And a gentle warning, maybe pace yourselves tonight, friends, because our topic is the bone wars. The word is bone. If you hear the word <laughs> bone, you're gonna take a sip. People in the chat already like, pace yourself, guys. This is great, <laughs> very, very sound advice. Um, Christina, we always like to know right at the beginning, like any class, we want to take attendance. We don't know where people are coming from, if they've know. ever been here before. So our first poll, uh, and if this is your first time, you'll see we have a lot of polls, some of them much better than others. This is our first poll. How many times have you been to Dino 101? This is your first time, and it seems fun. This is your first time, and you're already sufficiently weirded out. Two to six times, seven to 12 times, or basically all of them that have ever occurred. Using your keypads, please vote now. It's Layla's first time. Welcome, Layla. Hey, Layla. Yeah, drop in the chat if it's your first time. I love first timers. This is my first time and it seems fun. We have 22, 26. It, the, it, the number is climbing of first timers. Hell yeah. yeah. Welcome Yo, home. It seems like there's a race between first timers and people that have never not been here. It's like 30%, 30%. You nerds, what's that kind of distribution called where there's a lot of the one over here and a lot of the one over there? Where it's like a double, like a, a Bactrian camel's back with the two humps? Bimodal. Yeah, Bimodal. thank you, chat. No, yep. You can always count in the chat. All right, I'm going to end this poll. So we, first time. The, real, hey, the real business is hand. It looks like, wow, a tie. A tie. Look at that. This is why voting is important. All it took was one person who abstained could have skewed this. But this is great. We have just as many newbies as we do seasoned Dino 101 veterans. I love that. Now, you guys, if you're a veteran, uh, you know that every single Dino 101, we have a Dino of the day. And today, of course, is no different. Now, in order for me to intro the dino of the day, I want you guys to take a moment and pretend, imagine, envision, you are, there's no quarantine in this scenario. It is, you are in New York City. You are at the world famous American Museum of Natural History, and you are at the entrance to the Hall of Ornithischian Dinosaurs. I, as your intrepid tour guide, am about to give you three objectives for your very own fossil hunt. It is A, find a dinosaur, B, figure out what that thing is named, and C, take a dino selfie with it. Now, before you actually go into the hall, though, I put one of these in your beautiful hand. This is a tiny toy dinosaur. These are also tiny toy dinosaurs. And you may notice some of them are relatively anatomically correct. You got plates, you got spikes, you got clubs, you got crests, all that jazz. But you, you guys are a fair Dino 101 audience. You guys are too smart for the easy ones. I want to give you the most nondescript, the most challenging, the most generic, I'm throwing up air quotes, generic dinosaur, dinosaur. So, of course, I hand you this 
no plates, no spikes. I, I, what is this thing? We don't even know. And that is the point is your job to go in the hall. And if you find it, should you find it, you win fame and fortune as getting your photo to be the photo that introduces today's dino of the day. That is right. This is my friend and left, Julia Kennedy. Her absolute favorite dinosaur is the one, the only, the underrated, the produced from the bone wars, misunderstood. And we're going to learn more about the science later. Camptosaurus. The Camptosaurus. Oh, thank you. There we go. There's uh -huh. The Camptosaurus is our dino of the day. Uh, it is a flexible lizard. That's what its name means. And the theme for today is not just a Camptosaurus. We have man's best friend here. So it needs to be a Camptosaurus with a friend. That friend can be another Camptosaurus. It could be a dog. It could be you. However you want to render Camptosaurus with a friend doing friend stuff. Uh, pen, paper, watercolors, digitally. If you choose to render it, again, totally optional. At the end of our time together, we'll go around the Zoom. And you guys are going to hold up some very friendly pieces of Camptosaurus paleo art. All right. Whew. Enough with the intros. It's time to get to the very, very special guest at hand. She is the lead paleontologist at Dinosaur National Monument. She has described and published a paper on what is now Arkansas's dinosaur, official dinosaur, Arkansaurus. It's a good name for Arkansas's dinosaur. And I just learned she is the owner of a very small menagerie, a tiny zoo that includes children. Per her own admission, ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca Hunt Foster. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Where are you zooming in from? I'm zooming in from Jensen, Utah, my office in Dinosaur National Monument. Can you move just to the side a little? Because I need to see the stegosaurus that's on the wall behind you. When you left earlier, we saw that drawing. And it's, oh. <laughs> this is the type of, this is the level of paleo art. I don't know if you guys can see the stegosaurus there. This is the level of paleo art that we're really aspiring to here at Dino 101, right? This is... This is top notch. I'm excited to see your Camptosauruses later. All right, Rebecca, before we get into who you are, what you do, the Bone Wars, all that jazz, you know we have to put you through the ringer like every guest spurt on Dino 101. We're going to play everyone's favorite game, Dino or Not a Dino. Here is how this is going to work. I'm going to read you a list of 10 different animals, some of which are real, actual dinosaurs, some of which we have totally made up. Your job is to simply discern the real dinos from the fake, if you need help, the chat is sometimes helpful, sometimes not so much. If you need a spelling, I'm happy to spell any of these. And I should also mention for the not dinosaurs, there is a theme. There's a theme for the not dinosaurs. If you can figure that out along the way as well, you win like a thousand internet high fives. Awesome. All right, here we go. Animal, what? Can you use it in a sentence if I need you to? I absolutely can, and I'm glad you asked. Animal number one, here we go. Prosimsaurus. Prosimsaurus. Spell. What? Spell. Oh, uh, P R O S I M S A U R U S. Prosimsaurus. Not a dinosaur. That is correct. That is not a dinosaur. You are one for one. Off to a great start. Number two, a patornis. A patornis. A-P-A-T-O-R-N-I-S, a patornis. Sounds like a bird. It, it, <laughs> maybe, I mean, maybe. Also, maybe I just use cool sounding suffixes and prefixes to make up names. I don't know. That's up to you. I'd say no. I'm not a bird person. You Clearly, you're not a bird person because a patornis <laughs> is a bird. It's a type of extinct species of bird that was around at the end of the Cretaceous. And as we know, birds are dinosaurs. And as we know, that's a drink. All right, one for one, animal number three, Sonic Colopterus. Sonic Colopterus. Christina is uh, scratching her proverbial goatee. You know, people don't talk about the goatee as being a casualty of wearing masks. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm trying on a mustache for the first time in my life. Anyway, no more. Uh, what do you think? I would Sog say no. What? I would say no. That is correct. That's not a dinosaur. You're now two and one. Number four, Cleosaurus. Just Cleosaurus, like C L A O C L A O Saurus. I like that you're writing them down. I like that. That's a that's a this strong. Is the, this is the way my brain works. Um, I would say probably yes, because that's the kind of name a paleontologist would name something obscure that they never actually knew what was. It's it's based off of one bone, isn't it? 
well, you're right. It is a dinosaur. You're <laughs> you've got three right, one wrong. Halfway there. Next, Tetrasuchus. Tetrasuchus. Not a dinosaur. That is not a dinosaur. You're now four and one. You're well on your way to getting six. Very low bar here, Dino one and one. You have to get a D minus to pass. I like you know, the, the video game theme though here, right? You're supposed to wait till the end to reveal that you figured it out. No, it's okay. You have your, well, you figure the cat is out of the bag. Uh, the not dinosaurs are based off of video games, which we all know are the most uh, <laughs> valuable commodity in the world right now. Yes. Sort of the stock market, right? Obviously. Uh, right. That and sitting in a movie theater. All right, next, Anchisaurus. Dinosaur. That is a dinosaur. You, you're going to crush the rest of these five and one. Zeldonix. Zeldonix. <laughs> nope, that is not a dinosaur. Another correct answer. Next, Nanosaurus. Yes. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we try to stay away from dubious genuses. Is Nanosaurus? I, according to my records here, Nanosaurus is a dinosaur. Oh, Next, right. you got you got two more. Right now, you are seven and one, which is great. Next, Princonodon. Princonodon. No. Princonodon is a dinosaur. We believe it is a notosaur and it's based only off of teeth. So that one, that one's not, yeah, I know that's tough. That's tough. All right. Seven and two to get a solid 80. Last but not least, uh, this one I just have an abbreviation for. It's GTA. I'd say no, but I'm a little nervous as to what the abbreviation stands for. <laughs> It's a Grand Theft Autornis. Grand, oh. uh, Grand Theft, it's, yeah, that's clearly oh, not it. Listen, oh, you crushed the game. Uh, a Patornis is an extinct species of early bird. We had Cleosaurus, which is a hadrosaur. Anchisaurus, which is a basal. Sauropodomorph, which is like a really early sauropod. Uh, Nanosaurus is a tiny little ornithopod. And Princonodon, again, is a notosaur. Rebecca, you have won the game. You have won the right to stay in the Zoom. Thank God, because I'm excited to hear you talk about the Bone Wars. Now, before we get to the Bone Wars, though, Christine and I were talking. We always like to do a poll right, right before we get into like the meat of the show. And so let me bring up our next poll of the day. Since we're talking about the bones and wars, other than bone and war, what do humans repeatedly do poorly? Is it A, parallel park, B, ride in silence in the elevator, C, reply you too when someone tells us to have a safe flight, tip or just the tip? Please vote now. Which which do you believe? Human humans do? just keep doing, but doing it poorly. Okay, we have a lot of votes. You can't vote because you're a co-host, Rebecca, but how would you vote if you could here? Um, let's see. Probably the reply you too or something like that. We all we all screw that one up. Like you go to the movie and they say enjoy your movie and you say you too, yep. even though yep. they don't get to watch the movie. Fair. Christina kept on talking about how she tells uh, waiters that they should also enjoy their meal. Yeah. yeah, they will eventually eat another meal, so I assume they can just save it for later. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go ahead and end this poll. It was a tight race. Um, but I'm going to show the results here. And it, apparently I could have easily predicted this from the, the freakazoids that are in the chat every week. I love you guys. I love the dick necks. Oh, and just FYI, if you are a dick neck, you know who you are. If you ever get in a fight at a hockey game and you get arrested, I will absolutely pick you up in a giant black pickup truck, but I will be very disappointed with you. All right. That was an inside joke for like four people. Rebecca. All right. Let's get to the meat of the matter. I don't even, where should we even begin? People have heard of the Bone Wars. Like, do we start with the people? Should we start with a specific species? Like when someone's like, what are the Bone Wars? Like, where do you begin? Yeah, I always kind of start with the people, I guess. Okay. Because the people are what what made it a, a big war or a battle or whatever. I'm glad you brought that up because these are the pictures like people see when they look up Bone Wars, right? You look, search Bone Wars, you get these two guys. I wanna show you this. I don't know if you've ever seen this, Rebecca. Uh, Christina found this this week, which I believe is a much better rendering of both of them. Not creepy or weird at all. There we go. Let's just look <laughs> off this one. Somebody <laughs> wants to maybe make a Pixar adjacent movie with these guys as the stars. I don't know, but they oh. know where and how I die. That is amazing. Yes. Well, All right. I'll, I'll shut up now. Take it away. I don't know where Hollywood's been. So, uh, 
yeah, it, it comes down to these these two guys, these really charismatic uh, people who had known each other for a long time. They were both paleontologists. And Marsh is from Yale. And um, Edward Drinker Cope is from the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia. And they've known each other for a while. And they're, you know, kind of swinging in the same circles like paleontologists do. And then they start kind of like getting in each other's spaces and getting on each other's nerves. And, you know, after a while, about, was it like 1872, they really start stepping on each other's toes. They're, you know, they would visit a quarry with each other that one of them would go backhanded and like, sneak, you know, pay somebody to sneak into this other guy's quarry at night. And it just kind of goes awry. And it, as soon as they all start heading out west, to start doing the bulk of um, their paleontological field work, and not just on dinosaurs, a lot on mammals as well, um, it really starts to get ugly. So you mentioned, when we were on the phone earlier this week, you brought up, I think, four different things. I don't know if you remember what these four were, but you brought up four things that, in your mind, were the worst parts of the Bone Wars. Just this is bad. Be the Bone Wars would be bad because blank. Do you remember what those were? I don't yeah, know why I'm placing you now, but... <laughs> My, um, I think the things that I feel the worst about the Bone Wars is that they both ultimately kind of go broke and squander their family fortunes that they had. Um, and the fossils were little, like legitimately destroyed during this feud to keep each other away. There's even, you know, talk of things being blown up to discourage further work. So whether or not that's hyperbole, but yeah, it's like, all this bad stuff was happening. They were alienating other paleontologists who didn't even want to have anything to do with them or work with them anymore because they were just sick of the drama. Um, so they were kind of out of there. And um, it actually ends up with the USGS no longer supporting paleontologists because of all the bad publicity they're getting. So that, that would be what I would consider kind of like the bad things that came out of the Bone Wars. There are a lot of bad things that came out of the Bone Wars. So we decided we're going to talk about the good things that came out of the Bone Wars. And I'm also now realizing we really should have picked a different word than bone because maybe like take the babiest of baby sips when we say it, because this is, whew, this is going to be tough. So we decided, yeah, we decided that we, oops, uh, we were going to pick five different dinosaurs that came out of the Bone Wars because depending on who you talk to, somewhere between 150 and 200 new species were named by these two men over the course of like a decade. So even though, yes, uh, there, it was not great, and it defunded a lot of paleontology uh, support for other dinosaur experts. We still got a ton of awesome dinosaurs out of it, including the five that we wanted to highlight tonight. So, Rebecca, I'm going to bring up to the screen the first one, which actually, ironically, was our dino of the day last week. So, first and foremost, this is one of, I think, probably, probably in the top five most iconic, most famous dinosaurs. It is the one, the only Triceratops. Yes, everybody loves Triceratops, including myself. I think Triceratops is awesome. So yeah, Triceratops wasn't found um, necessarily first. Cope actually found an early version that I even struggle pronouncing, the Aga, Agathamimus. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's one of those tongue twisters. He actually found that in um, southern Wyoming and named it off of some scrappy material. And it wasn't until later, and at the time too, it was one of the biggest dinosaurs that had been found. Um, I think it was at the time the biggest one that had been found until um, a Pavasaurus or Diplodocus later found. And yeah, so Cope's kind of like, oh, I've got this big dinosaur. And then they go around and Marsh, you know, they find Triceratops bones and they kind of start comparing them. They're like, oh, they're the same thing. So that was kind of like the beginning of the deflation of these two guys finding a lot of similar things and naming them in the intense period of the bone battles. Or sorry, I should say the fossil wars to get you guys <laughs> Fossil <over>. fracas. <laughs> um, speaking of Triceratops, I know this is something you've actually personally studied. Can you quickly give us the, the controversy or the, the debate between Taurosaurus versus Triceratops? Like, what is that all about? Yeah, so in a nutshell, and just looking at specimens from the Hell Creek, not really looking at specimens that are known from elsewhere in North America. The thought process is that possibly Taurosaurus is just an old version of Triceratops. So it's just an age stage um, throughout what they call the ontogeny of the animal as it grows. And it goes from this cute little tiny, you know, sheep sized 
triceratops all the way up into the big thing that we know today. And when they're little, they have these little holes in their frill. And as they get bigger, their frill gets solid. But then there's this theory that the holes kind of open up as they get older. And so maybe all the torosaurs are just old triceratops. So that is one theory that's been um, really championed by folks from the Museum of the Rockies. So the frill in a triceratop, that big piece of bone is completely filled. And then in Taurosaurus or maybe elderly Triceratops, there are holes and it's not completely filled in. So it's, is it right to say that like the bone density or even just the amount of bone in that frill uh, reduced over time? Yeah, they're thinking that it thins out over time. Is there like a corollary? Is that somewhat similar to like how people get like osteoarthritis and over time their bones aren't as strong and aren't as dense? Yeah, I mean, maybe they have done a lot of histology work looking at the way the bone remodels in those areas. So I guess that probably plays into it. Um, but we also have like, you know, smaller versions of Taurosaurus. And that's what I actually worked on for my master's thesis were small Taurosaurus from Big Bend National Park. So, you know, and we get Taurosaurus from other places like in the Denver area. So maybe Taurosaurus is real. Jury's still out is what I'm hearing. We're not Jury's still out. Yeah, okay. paleontologists always need something to yell about. This is one. That's fair. All right. I'm gonna bring on Christina now. Hey Christina, how you doing? Hey. Just chilling in the background, holding it down per I'm usual. I'm on the ones and twos. I'm not chilling. Oh, you're, you're crushing the ones and twos per usual, but I know you have a dinosaur straight from the bone wars to tell us about. It's our dino of the day. Give us the science, give us a background. What's up, Christina? It's true. Um, our dino of the day, and I didn't have a yellow one, but I do have a, a gray and orange guy. Yeah, Rick has one too. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, our dino of the day, the Camptosaurus. Uh, Marsh found this one. As we go through the dinosaur, a lot of them are uh, coke discoveries, and Marsh needed some representation too. Uh, Marsh found this guy, and my model actually looks a lot like uh, the way he initially mounted it. This is one of my favorite museum moments because uh, a lot of dinos were initially mounted like meerkats, sitting straight up with dangly little paws uh, with, that this ended up like, and that's the mount in the American Museum of Natural History in New York City as well. A couple of decades went by, they were flipped over so they were to walk on all fours. Can you, yeah. And then hug nice people in sundresses. Uh, that's sort of how they were mounted next. And then it turned out their hips were positioned in a way that made them habitual quadrupeds, meaning they could walk on two feet if they wanted most of the time, but then they had a habit of walking around on four if they needed to. So they could be walky hands or grabby fingers. And this one looks like a meme of itself. That's why I chose this image. What is that? It looks like you put something in its hand here. I did, yes. Uh, Without sorry. something for scale, it's just bad science. Yes. One so, day, Chapman will sponsor us. One day. One day, it's true. So, uh, a side note, while I was trying to figure out the phrase habitual quadrupedalism, I learned about a TV show called The Family That Walks on All Fours, and it's a family of human people who walk on their feet and their hands. I hate that. I hate that so much. So. Like, they've, I, I have so many questions, I don't want to know any of the answers. <laughs> it's really dumb. I'll host a watch party, because I, I need to know more. This sounds like something we should discuss in the after party. Okay. All right. So we've hit up Triceratops slash Taurosaurus, Camptosaurus, uh, another iconic dino from the American West that came out of the Bone Wars. Uh, we already saw a picture of it on the wall behind Rebecca. Rebecca, it is the one and the only Stegosaurus. Who found the first Stegosaurus? So Stegosaurus was first found by Marsh in 1877. Um, in Morris in Colorado. And um, I don't think Bernie was usually riding on the Stegosaurus, but he looks nice and warm and cuddly in there. I love Bernie. So that's a holdover from last week when every single uh, dino had Bernie for scale. I just, it was, it was I don't a, think it's old yet. It's not it was old. a great week. I, you can do these forever. I'll never get tired of them. Oh, I know. We saw on your Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got out of hand. Uh, do you have the funny picture of the Stegosaurus I sent you? Uh, I have multiple funny pictures of Stegosaurus, <laughs> which I will ask you about. So I like the rear up ones. Like what? Yes. So if you look at those, like they weren't sure if the spikes were spiky, if they were just like, like, like 
thorns or if they were these plates that were in a single row like a chainsaw shark of some sort so yeah those were some of the early reconstructions here's another one of those cool ones where it's just like the single row of plates going down the back of this crazy scaly alligator looking guy the real the real weird i mean this is these are great obviously but these are the ones that i would yes. love to hear your your take on so i love these pictures these are just like the best especially in that black and white one you can see a stegosaurus taking its leap of faith off of the cliff in the background it's just poetic so when marsh was first describing these things he thought they were kind of like these aquatic turtles and that's why he named them the roof lizard because he thought that the plates laid down flat and were kind of like forming shingles over the body of it um so that is where this whole flat lying um plate thought process came from and it wasn't until later when they start finding uh more better preserved stegosaurus specimens like the roadkill stegosaur at garden park and things like that that they were better able to tell what the position of those plates really were and that they were actually more held up and, and staggered and not just you know flat crazy so how, do you think this is a pretty good, pretty accurate piece of paleo art here? Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a good answer. Like, we just don't know. By the way, I try to use uh, most of Sissio Purple on DeviantArt's um, paleo art. That's what this one is as well. I just think they always have interesting colorations. There's always something there for scale. Yeah, so and that's with. always nice. Yeah, scale's great. You know, Stegosaurus is super cool. We even have a baby Stegosaurus from here at Dinosaur National Monument. So it's always fun to think about how tiny they were too. That's that's true because at the American Museum of Natural History, their skeletal uh, Stegosaurus mount has a little baby next to it too. Yep. Is that is that like the same? Yep, it's based off of our material and material that the Denver Museum found later. Yes, okay. and the Thagomizers, I see that in your comment. The Thagomizers are the tail spikes. and. Those are awesome because those that name came from an old Far Side cartoon. If you if you remember the Far Side, where a caveman died from being hit by one of these tail spikes, and his name was Fag. So Ken Carpenter kind of coined that name in a talk once, the Fagamizer. And is, you either love it or you hate it. Is this the cave person? This guy naked in the in the lake right? Maybe that's Fag. Yeah, and he's about to get it from that gliding um, Stegosaurus there. So. It appears as though this stegosaurus may be taking up brontosaurus's space in a sex lake. Christina, for our first time <laughs> viewers, can you explain what the hell a sex lake is? Of course I can. I, it's always good to do a vocabulary review. There is a paleontologist who really, really believes that it might be the only one that sauropods were so big that they could not have made it on land. So they would have had to do so aquatically. So they would be buoyant enough to not crush each other's bones. Um, and so the location of some of this water might have been a sex lake, a vacation destination for your mating needs. There's no- Enjoying sex in a lake. Yeah. No definitive proof of that, but it lives forever in our hearts and in our minds. All right, Rebecca, we are three fifths of the way through our dinosaurs, which means it is time for everyone's second favorite game. Now, this game has kind of a long name, so I want you to bear with me as I read it out for you and for everyone, especially if it's your first time here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the M draws in front of everyone while the guesswork, that's you, Rebecca, attempts to figure out what topic or guesswork related word or phrase M is attempting to digitally render whiteboard challenge brought to you by the new Paris or office that dropped this week. Yeah, the first Paris office skull found in 97 years. It was down in New Mexico, and now we learned a ton more about the differentiation between species in places like, oh, I don't know, Utah, where you are, and New Mexico, as well as all the way up into Alberta. But enough about that. We're here for the whiteboard challenge. I just love Paris office, and I know we have Paris office stands in the room right now. All right, Em, I'm going to bring you forward. Em, our resident graphic designer. Em, what are you drinking, and where are you? What up? I have a sparkling wine. I'm at my parents' house. Yeah. And I loved your graphic you made. Did you like this? That, so okay. I loved it. Okay. I was trying to find a fun, enthusiastic picture of you. And I feel like, you know, two M's are better than one. All right. Uh, M, go ahead. Bring up your whiteboard. I have already private messaged M the first of the three clues for tonight's whiteboard challenge. So uh as she draws rebecca please just 
think out loud, trying to figure out what she's trying to render. There's definitely going to be some help from the chat. There are three rounds. They get progressively more difficult. This is round one, M. I don't know what that is, Looks but like maybe you remember back. It's a keyhole. Oh, no, it's a, oh, goodness, my son has this Pokemon thing. What is it? A Snorlax. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but he has one. Remember, this is this is somewhat related to you or the theme for tonight. Oh goodness! Oh, is it? It's Marsh with his his manly beard. Okay, that's it. Is Marsh's facial hair? <laughs> OC Marsh's facial hair was clue number one. That one, that's <laughs> looks just. Like... <laughs> that's excellent. <laughs> it is very juicy topish. I agree. I like his eyebrows. All right, yes. uh, round number two. M, I am. Well, you actually, I just messaged you the second one. You have a second round at your leisure. Take it away. This one's a little bit more difficult. We'll see All right. what she can do. We'll see if I can do. Right. Exactly. It's a hat. Oh, boy. It's a, uh, it's Dinosaur National Monument. Not, but just not that, not only that, what specifically? Camarasaurus. Mm. Oh, um, is it me a dinosaur? <laughs> what specific part? What specific oh. part? Of the quarry wall, the hump? There we go, the quarry wall. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The quarry wall at Dinosaur National Monument. Uh, that's a preview for something I'm going to show you in one second. But first, we need to move to round three. The most difficult of the rounds. I have sent the clue to M. She has it. This one might be tough for those in the chat because I think this is pretty Rebecca Hunt Foster specific, but we'll see. Yes, we'll anyway. See. Our chat is full of brilliant minds. M, someone in the chat says you're kicking butt per usual. That is true. Oh, and, has, and has guessed sex like for everyone and someday you will be right Ellen, you can't guess. why can't i guess <laughs> oh it does look like bernie yeah okay so it, it is bernie but it's not just bernie it's bernie doing it's something bernie doing is he hawking the girl scout cookies god damn it how did you do that yeah <laughs> it's bernie sanders buying or selling girl scout cookies and we can hook you up with girl scout cookies because i've got a girl scout troop christina you want to uh <laughs> christina let us know why we decided to go with a girl scout cookie theme there also uh, thank you M. M. per <laughs> usual crushing the I'll game go. you are a goddess. so much air horn for you M. So much uh, we, ch we chose bernie buying girl scout cookies because we stalked your Facebook, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific place that we should go if we want to purchase them? Yeah. Yes, there's a link on my Facebook page and my Instagram page, and I can I can hook you up with some okay. goodness. Five dollars a box, six dollars for the gluten free. That's is that a deal? Drop the link. Someone in the chat, drop the link. <laughs> drop the link. <laughs> we'll find it. We'll find oh, it. But I'll this find a link for you. Yeah. Okay. This brings up an important question though, Rebecca. Which is your favorite Girl Scout cookie flavor? Is uh, it shortbread, tagalongs, thin mints, Samoas, or other? Please state your case in the chat. Rebecca, how are you voting? I'm definitely a thin mint girl. I love thin mints. It's I have a I have a major problem uh, with thin mints. So it's a good thing. But my husband and I have to buy our separate boxes. Because he doles them out like communion wafers, and I eat like a box when everybody goes to bed. So, quick, Christina, uh, how are you voting? And then I'm going to tell you a quick communion wafer story. Oh, this is so, so difficult for me to choose between Thin Mints and Samoas. Uh, I, I'm going to go Samoas only because I think everybody loves Thin Mints. Samoas are slightly an underdog. Okay. We sell more Samoas than anything out here in Utah, though. Samoas followed very closely by Thin Mints. Listen, there's your link. It is very tight right now between Thin Mints and Samoas. Uh, if you have not voted, your vote could decide this. My uh, communion story is the first time I'm, I'm Jewish. The first time I was taken to whatever they call it where communion happens. Uh, I didn't know, like they hand it to you and I didn't know that I was supposed to put it in my mouth. So I like, just take it back. I sit down in the pew and like 10 minutes later, the person I was with was like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know. I just, I didn't have any water and I, I'm not really hungry right now. So. Apparently, you're supposed to eat it right away. To the Jews in the audience who have not taken communion, just put it in your mouth. Just do it. Join us in the after party to hear about my favorite dream I've ever had that involved communion. 
<laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, Thin Mints, though, have won it, which I, I, I feel like that's was, that was always going to happen. That's fair. Yeah, my daughter rages against the Keebler Elves who have stolen the recipe. They're, they're a nasty word in our house. The Keebler Elves come on the TV and the kids lose their mind. Wow. <laughs> She's like militantly anti Keebler Elves. I like yeah, that. Yeah, there's like heat seeking missiles searching for the Keebler Elves because they've stolen the Girl Scout cookie formulas. For our next poll, who would win, the Keeper Elves versus the Fraggles? No, that's actually, that's a good question. We can talk about that another time. Fraggles versus the Keeper Elves. All right, uh, we have two more animals we have to hit up before we get to what I'm sure is going to be a tremendous paleo art gallery. Ladies and gentlemen, we have talked about uh, Triceratops. We've talked about Camptosaurus. We have talked about Stegosaurus. It is time to talk about our first animal that came out of the Bone Wars that is not a dinosaur. And this is it right here if i can share my screen ladies and gentlemen look at this it's a lasmosaurus or at least this is a depiction of a drawing or a skeletal <laughs> rendering of a lasmosaurus as it was done by cope in the mid to late 1860s uh he had an army doctor that was working in kansas and found this uh which well the reason why something that obviously lives in water was found in kansas is because at the time there was a giant western interior seaway that cut north america in half and that's why we find animals like this clearly aquatic living what is now hundreds of miles from the coast and speaking of the coast cope was first and foremost a lizard expert so he saw this thing he's like oh i know a bunch of lizards that have a big, big long tail they use it to push water they move around aquatically so clearly this is what it the skeleton looked like when i put it all together i even made this really cool drawing of it with the world's longest tail that just keeps on going and going and going so Cope did all this and he published in a, like a preliminary paper. I'm not exactly sure what the status is between preliminary and like official, but whatever. He published this preliminary paper about it and then had the world's preeminent uh, evolutionary biologist at the time, Joseph Leidy, come and look at it. And Leidy was like, wow, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like it because again, no one had ever found an elasmosaurus before. He's like, this is amazing. Never seen anything like it. But how come every single vertebrae faces the opposite direction of every animal we've ever known is it possible that you put the head on the wrong end? To which I assume Cope said, fuck. I don't know, I don't know what he said, but he tried to find, uh, buy and destroy every copy of that preliminary paper to save his credibility because that allows him source that he made look like this actually look like this. And now we have a very cool paleo art rendition of it, which looks like this. Its name means thin plate reptile. Uh, but for my dick neck stands in the audience, Got a, it's got a, you know, it's like a sauropod. It's like a watery sauropod with a stubby tail. And that is another, another vocabulary review. A dick neck is just a, it's just a big long neck. Yeah, that's fair. That's and that's, fair. that's what our regulars call themselves. We love you, dick necks. Point of clarification, remember again, Elasmosaurus is not a dinosaur. This is a type of marine reptile, just like today. There are lots of groups of animals alive. Back then, lots of groups as well. These guys lived in water, as it depicted here. No dinosaur ever lived, at least exclusively, in water. So there are no like water dinosaurs. Elasmosaurus, like plesiosaurs, mosasaurs, ichthyosaurs, marine reptiles, not dinosaurs. Still pretty iconic, but not as iconic as our last dinosaur of the day, Rebecca. Yes. Can Not you take us through why on earth did I give one picture of one dinosaur two different names here? <laughs> oh, good Lord. Okay, here we go. This is where it gets fun. Are you ready? All right. So, Marsh and Cope, right? They've been battling it out now for a while. They started kind of in Colorado and then they moved their feud up north to Wyoming, Como Bluff, which is like the, the tinderbox for. Um, for, for the bone wars where everything just goes off. And this is, you know, I've been talking to Britt Brytop about this. So he like knows all about Como Bluff and has been like, he has stories, man. And when we think about a patasaurus versus brontosaurus, we think of these big dinosaurs. And the patasaurus was actually named in 1877 by Marsh. And um, then Marsh later names brontosaurus in 1879 based on a better specimen from Como Bluff. And, um, you know, so Apatosaurus means deceptive lizard, which is funny. And then Brontosaurus means thunder lizard, which is so funny. <laughs> and it wasn't until the early 1900s that a guy named Elmer Riggs, who worked at the Field Museum, was like, dude, these are the same thing. And he, like, 
pointed this out and everybody just kind of ignored poor Elmer Riggs like they always did. And it wasn't until the 1970s that people, you know, started paying attention and thinking, okay, well, maybe, you know, maybe Apatosaurus is Brontosaurus. And by this point, you know, the American Museum and a bunch of others already had their Apatosaurus labeled Brontosaurus. Um, the Yale specimen, yeah, there we go. Uh, that's the American Museum specimen. The specimen at Yale, there we go, is actually the holotype for Brontosaurus. And so these things were called Brontosaurus forever. The Flintstones kind of perpetuated this myth. So it took people a long time. It took a really long time to retrain people to call things um, a patasaurus and not Brontosaurus. And so we kind of get people retrained in the 1970s when Jack Mastercloth starts working on this. And, um, you know, little kids are correcting adults by this point. And everybody's like, okay, so Brontosaurus isn't a real thing. It's really a patasaurus. And then somebody else has to come into the picture. In 2015, a mango shop comes in and he like shakes up the bag of dinosaurs and writes like a 300 page paper and publishes like this giant tome on Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus and every specimen ever with, you know, hundreds of thousands of character states it seemed and like just an immense paper and was like, oh no, Brontosaurus is real. And people were like, you know, but we thought Brontosaurus wasn't real. So this is still a debate that's going on. I mean, Emmanuel did a really good job justifying his thoughts and, and put a, a lot of work into um, being like, it's real. But yeah, that's sauropod work for you. There, Nobody can agree on anything. Sauropods, man. Sauropods. Or the long boys, the dick necks, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, darn sauropods. So I see a lot of people in the chat <laughs> Kristen uh, just asked, so is either name cool to use? It Right now, yeah. I mean, you can just say, oh, yeah, I'm a shop person. Oh, yeah, I like him. You know, Emmanuel's my boy. So, yeah, it just depends on who you pick. So you can call him by whatever name you want. And I like that as a segue to our very last poll. We have talked about some very cool named bone wars dinosaurs so i'm not asking you right now which is your favorite guys i want to know which of tonight's bone wars dinosaurs oh i forgot bone is a drink we have not been sticking to our i'm sure people are drinking on their own you don't need my help you're adults which of tonight's bone wars dinosaurs has the coolest meaning name is it deceptive lizard thunder lizard flexible lizard three horned face or reptile roof Oh, I spelled it wrong. I put rude repti reptile, reptile, <laughs> shit, roof reptile. That should be roof reptile. <laughs> Christina, how are you voting? Oh boy. Uh, I was just giving Christina her A back because I, I did hear you say Kristen and it's very important that we are Christine us. Apologies. It's cool. Uh, well, oh man, I, I'm partial to flexible lizard. I like that it is, it's either like, Ooh, I'm flexible or like, uh, they're just easygoing and nice to have at a party. Okay. Okay. Rebecca? I've got to go with deceptive lizard. I like the, the you know, the sneakiness of that. Uh, but everybody loves thunder lizard, of course, because that's just, it, it makes you envision a brontosaurus. Yeah. This is actually closer than I thought. Thunder lizard right now is in the lead. A couple more people have not voted, uh, but rude reptile, roof reptile is second. Uh, I'm going to share these results. I thought we get more votes. I thought we get more votes for Deceptive Lizard. It is sneaky. I think. I think as weird as we are, we're also a wholesome bunch who likes truth and justice. We don't want to be deceived. This is facts. This is true. Um, all right, guys. We are somehow right on schedule. This might be a first. I don't know. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, but before we go to what I'm sure is going to be a tremendous paleoarc alley of Camptosauri, Camptosauruses. Camptosauruses and friends, I'm sure, Christina, we have some questions in the chat for our guest expert paleontologist. We sure do. And now is a great time to send me more. Any questions that you have been saving up for us, for our guest expert, anything that you've been curious about as we've gone through the bone wars and these guys with their experimental facial hair. <laughs> uh, the wait, 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 Christina, real quick pause. Remember when we Google search, if you Google image bone wars facial hair, a screenshot from Dino 101 is the third result. So I think we've made it. I think we've made it. <laughs> it's true. I, I called my mom and was like, I'm the third. 
I'm not even in the image. A show I do stuff for is the third Google image search result when you Google bone wars facial hair. <laughs> All right, real questions, hit us. Here we go. Uh, first question we got back at the beginning of the show, what was the press like at the time? How were dinosaurs communicated to the public and were they aware of the bone wars? Great question. Yeah, prior to the bone wars, people didn't really know a lot about a, a lot about dinosaurs. And the bone wars definitely kind of spurred that on and made people more interested in fossils and definitely made them want to go to museums and wanted to see pictures and wanted to learn more about this. And there were quite a many um, saucy articles like um, Latter-day social media in the New York Herald that one of our um, viewers tonight, Susan, sent me some copies of last night, which was super cool to see like these salacious articles like with headlines calling things out. So it was a lot of fun to see these these ancient articles on the bone wars and and imagine these men with their cigars sitting in their smoking rooms, you know, discussing, oh, oh my God, can you believe what he did? So yeah, quite the scandal. Very saucy. Also, I was just independently of what you said about to give Susan NYC a shout out. I've just loved your energy all show. It's it, us. Yeah, you're wonderful. Um, how does one get to be the boss of Dinosaur National Monument? So what was your path like to your current position? Luck. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't luck. Um, no, I worked in um, museums after grad school and did a lot of field work, which I love field work. That's like the best part of paleo. And did some mitigation paleontology work, which we discussed earlier. For those of you who may have never have heard of the word mitigation paleontology, it's where you go out uh, when they're doing construction, like building a road or, you know, putting in a swimming pool in California or anything like that. And you look for fossils before the bulldozer comes and you're there on site to save the fossils. You're the Lorax of the fossils. And so I did some of that mitigation paleontology. And then after that, I got a job with the Bureau of Land Management in Moab, Utah. And I worked there for a number of years, for like five and a half years, and had a grand time playing with dinosaur tracks mostly and working with some spectacular people before I had an opportunity to apply for the job here at Dinosaur National Monument, which there had only been the one paleontologist here for my entire life. So I just kind of figured, you know, he's going to be there for my entire life. But he retired and I was able to apply and things worked out. So yeah, that's my building that I get to work in. That's the historic Carnegie Quarry that if you come to Dinosaur National Monument, you get to go inside and see the fossil wall. And this, so this is a Morrison, 150 million year old Jurassic dinosaur graveyard where all these animals are still encased in the rock and you can see the bones on the wall. So there I am for scale with some of these large limb bones. Yeah, it's a great place to work. I am so lucky. Audience, add another quarter to the shoot your shot in 2021 bank. That's <laughs> awesome. I feel fun. I have a, a combo destruction question. Do we know what bones were destroyed? Also, did people die and how many? <laughs> and did those happen at the same time, the destruction of bones and human life at the same time? Surprisingly, one, we don't know what bones were destroyed, unfortunately, as far as I know. But two, people didn't die, but they totally almost did. Like there were quarries caving in on top of workers. There were threats of gun violence. There was like a, a like a threat, like a call out, like a call for a duel at a train station once. Um, there were guys that wanted to like go at it in the quarries because they were just sick of each other. So there was a lot of like um, hostility. They were they were frustrated. I'm picturing the classic like dukes up yeah. it's, it's, that happened in the general American yeah. past. But then there were guns, lots of guns, because it's the American West in the late 1800s. So, yeah. But it never actually came to loss of human life. At Nobody least died. Going yeah. for us. Nobody died. Are there? there no of. <laughs> right. Uh, to be fair, they are both dead. This is true. They did die with sad hearts. Broken sad hearts. Wow. <laughs> Are there? I have so many, I have so many questions in the chat. Uh, Take a couple saves. You got this. Let's do it. Uh, are there current bone wars? 
Yes. Are there research people right now duking it out in a similar way? Yes, but not blowing things up and not threatening gun violence, thank God. But there are definitely competitive paleontologists, but it just doesn't make as much of a splash as it did back in the day because now there's so many more of us. How many dinosaurs were the Bone Wars responsible for naming? Oh. And how many ended up questioned, ended up being a dubious genus or a, a similar? Yeah, that's a really good question. There's got to be a list on the internet somewhere. I think Marsh discovered um, around 80 of them. And I think Cope discovered like 56. So there was, you know, this. I think uh, Marsh ended up finding more. So if you're, you know, if you're the person who's going to find the most dinosaurs, I guess Marsh won. Um, so there were like 136 or so just dinosaurs that were found during the Bone Wars. That doesn't include all the mammals and turtles and, and more mammals and reptiles and all the other crazy stuff that never gets any attention. Dinos get all the credit. They're the ones on the lunchbox. You mentioned that this this feud, it was bad PR for paleontology. Funding got pulled. Was there something that brought it back? Did they redeem their reputation somehow? No. <laughs> so our fund, paleontology is chronically underfunded. Um, but I would definitely say that like in the 1970s, paleontology started getting sexier again once we were out of all the civil war and the world war wars and the vietnam war once people were able to actually like get out of wartime and start joining science again the 1970s there definitely was kind of this reinvigoration of paleontology and people were kind of like really curious about it again and then of course with the um when jurassic park came on the scene that really spurred uh, especially dinosaur paleontology again, and more funding came about for a, a, you know, a small amount of time. And it's benefited a lot of people though. Uh, is there, is there posthumous beef? Is, are there cope stands and marsh stands oh, yeah. now who fight? Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, that's definitely... my bin name for the philosophy writings I do. Yeah, <laughs> The Mars team and the Cope team and who can trace their academia, academia lineage back to either one. And yeah, so there's definitely, you know, teams. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do another combo question. Is there, is there some international competition? Like the example that Dave gave in the chat was Chinese scientists versus American scientists, possibly. Yeah. And also, what is the pettiest beef in paleontology? Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, so I would say, yes, there are still um, competitions. I think they're a little more academically friendly these days between like the Chinese scientists discovering all the cool things. I think another issue we have are paleontologists going to foreign countries and collecting that material and then taking it back to their country to work on it and maybe not wanting to return it to the country it should be in or violating that country's laws to... Um, not include researchers that they should, things like that. It gets ugly. So there's definitely some things that are still going on. And as far as like the nastiest like paleo bone war still going on today, um, geez. You know, nobody's like, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head that like, I'm just gonna speak for the United States here. He's like super duper nasty. Like I'm not worried about getting shot when I'm in the field and I'm not worried about any of my friends getting beaten up. But yeah, there's some undermined backstabby stuff that goes on, but that's paleo for you. <laughs> that's oh. another thing that people have been repeatedly doing poorly forever. Yeah, yeah, Pe paleo people don't always end up being the best at being people people. <laughs> They're really good <laughs> with fossils. They're just not really good with people. <laughs> It puts life in perspective when you're like, I'm a future fossil. Yeah. I don't need to be nice. Yeah. Finally, Marsha Cope. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I'm a Riggs girl. I don't, I don't go with Marsh or Cope. I'm a Riggs girl. I like Elmer that. Riggs. Ooh. You got to look him up. He's the man. Yeah, so, I mean, he yep. invented glue, right? Riggs, What's that? He invented glue, right? Yeah, he did invent glue. That's a different guy. It's a different Elmer. All right, I don't know. But, uh, he said the Brachiosaurus in Grand Junction, the very first Brachiosaurus. 
he's the one that found the part of the Apatosaurus that's mounted at the Field Museum. He did a lot of really cool stuff. I, I really like the period that came after the Bone Wars where museums were working better together. You have like folks from the Smithsonian and the Carnegie and the Field Museum that are that are out doing a lot of really good work, especially in the Jurassic Morrison formation and finding a lot of cool stuff and, and working well together. Nice. I love hashtag Elmergate. <laughs> Elmergate, it's happening. <laughs> well, this Elmer erasure will not stand. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of erasure and erasers, that's the opposite of what you did with your campus stores. You made them. Maybe use an eraser. I don't know. Christina, how great am I at segues? So good. So good. I, All right, here we go. It's time for it. Paleo Art Gallery. If you have rendered a Campusaurus and a friend new in Campusaurus and friend stuff, please hold that up. We have a lot to go through. So Rebecca, I'm just going to like cycle through a bunch as I'm going. Let us know your thoughts on the artistry, the scientific accuracy, the color, whatever, the friendship. I don't know. However you want to talk about it. Christina, you as well. We need to hear your feedback. Um, I'm going to start with our resident, our paleo artist, our paleographic design artist in residence. And with the chapstick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is Helen's art. It's, it's very good. And very soft. It's 3D. Very good. We're That's gonna. Go, I gotta keep it moving. We got a lot. Ooh. Ooh. Woo! Ankylosaurus! Oh wow, that's awesome. That's I believe that's a that's a dad joke pun level too. So if you want to drink, you can drink to that. I like the Kylo Ren. That's yeah. excellent. That's good. That's good. We're going to a Ryan Drinker. <laughs> I hope it's I hope it's Adam Driver's face under that helmet. Uh, Campusaurus sing this song to it off. That's cute. That's cute. That is adorable. I love it. I think somebody oh, should watch that song out. Just a couple of buds. <laughs> This next one is brought to you by Mountain Dew stand Michael Bajaro, Campusaurus. Oh, they're on Friends. Oh, I like it. Friends on Friends. I love it. I can hear a smelly cat in the background. <laughs> oh. uh, this is a good time to mention. Please, you guys, upload these. Twitter, Instagram, tag myself, Christina, uh, Atlas Obscura, Paleo Chick. Christina, can you drop everyone's links? Yeah, in the chat? Please tag us so we can reshare these because they are works of art that belong in the Museum of Twitter. Next, Woo! Carol. Oh, they're on a comet. We'll be fine, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a roller coaster. They're strapped they're at in. a fair or something. Yeah, they're like, they're at a fair riding a ride. I love it. <laughs> the poor yeah. guy, the comet. <laughs> Gene and Ruth Camp Tosaurus. With an extant bird. That's good. That's good. Hey, nice necklace there, by the way. Yeah, I, like it. I like the shoes too, the heels. I mean, it's good. It's good. We're going over that. Uh, all right. Oh, a campfire. Okay, that makes sense. Ooh, camp, campusaurus. Excellent. Yes. I think I may have to steal that for my Girl Scout camp. Oh, that is fabulous. Vanessa, can I get a yes or no? Did you spend more time on that font than you did on the drawings of the dinosaurs? Yeah, okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. I respect that. I respect that. Whoa! Hey, campy at a campfire. This is Met Gala all over it. We have camp. They're camping. They're Camptosaurus. That's pretty cool. I like the um, flavor flavor watch. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. see that. It's great. Oh, That's so great. Nice. I love that. Does he have oh. a grill in his mouth? Oh, sorry. We'll have to oh. look later. <gasps> oh, but the meerkat. Oh, oh. thank his old his old self. Be my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I see Jada fixing her hair like she somehow knows she's next. <laughs> oh, <Taco. that's> <laughs> they look so happy. Oh, Taco. I love it. I like the colors on it too. I like how it sails. Got some colors. I like the emo yeah. hair too. The emo hair you put on the camp though, that's pretty good stuff. And in the best way, its face reminds me of a vulture, a friendly yeah. vulture. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Jada, Jada specializes Bravo. in junk, so weird features on dinosaurs. I'll give it to you. Ooh, this is so, oh, look at the oh, oh, look at just, just awesome. the hug we all crave. Is that a, <laughs> is that a Furby? Is that a Furby? It's hilarious. <gasps> I love it. <laughs> teep, teep, teep. I like his surprised look. Ah! That is great. That is great. This is tremendous. Oh, that is beautiful. 
Wow. Is, yeah. <laughs> I love that. So jealous of people like Brian here who have the skill to make this and Dennis, who also has tremendous paleo Ooh, skills. Legit paleo artist. I love it. Comic artist, it. Dennis A. John. That is cute. Friends with his own reflection. She's like looking in Mulan. for us in the mirror. so creative. So good. So good. Uh, we're going to Tierney now. Oh, jump roping. Oh, you just need one friend in a just row. One. That's all you need. Awesome. I like the jump friend. there. Do we have, oh, we got a couple more. Oh, we're going to Alec now. Ooh. I like the arms on this one. Yes. With the dog friend. That's good. That's good. It's very cute. I wish I could draw nearly as... Okay, we're going to New York City's... Well, I guess my sister doesn't teach in the city proper anymore, so I guess we can give... You know what? In New York City's top five teachers, Brittany Beck. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> a, a camp toe on a Zoom call. That's With awesome. all of us. Oh, I that's... Dino. Yay! <laughs> I love my dino friends with the with the past paleo art in the background and the chat popping off. Wow. Wow. After party not sponsored by Atlas Obscura. Yeah, uh, that's a good reminder. Once we get to the end of these, I'll give you guys info on how to come to the after party, which is totally optional and not attached to Atlas Obscura. Next, from Megan, a completely different dino, but shh. <laughs> <laughs> but shh. It's kitty friends. That is awesome playing with her tail that's cute that's what my house looks like oh, oh. the snail <laughs> and your nail polish rocks by the way yeah it's pretty great pretty we good. broke dustin he's whimpering about a snail oh oh i like that you've used oh that's good you use the theme from the not dinos i like that oh thinks he's playing that's um, awesome julie <laughs> oh it's unplugged Julia Kennedy, I know you don't have a drawing, but I see your face. Were you in this room when your picture was on the screen? She's not. She's not paying attention. Never mind. <laughs> she didn't, she didn't forget it. We have too many dinosaurs to go to. Oh, I like the coloring here. I like the coloring. Uh, it must have an invisible friend. I guess it's got an invisible friend. That is cool. Its okay. friends are the friends we made along the way. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Kevin and Courtney, who have been hilarious in the chat, I might add. Oh. Look at that. A beautiful cow. I love the rainbow. At the end of the day, this is really a depiction of the electromagnetic spectru spectrum that is emitting from our star. I like this. Multidisciplinary, here for it. Amanda's got a whole storyboard going on. My <laughs> dino. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so awesome. I love flexible it. lizard, flexible with its schedule. That's so cute. This is one of the best galleries we've had. Really, wow. All right, see, this is it. Now, this is what I can vibe with. I vibe with you. They're drinking. I like his hat. And a camping one, another camping one. That's awesome. Are, are those purple Uggs? Are we wearing purple Uggs? <laughs> uh, I don't know about That's that. Excellent. All right, we're going to keep it moving. We got, wait, this is someone outside that I did not meet. Oh, you have a drawing and you're outside <laughs> screaming with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, oh, Christy okay. with a K. Look at it. Oh, oh that's Christy Colm. She is a, a whale expert. <gasps> True. True facts. Cool. That is great. I love it. and friend on the go. Oh, nice. This one is great. I like the little humpback situation going on here. <laughs> uh, wow. <gasps> wow. Wow. That's fancy. Just, just wow. These punchy boys. I like that tenderizing that poor campsitor. Facts. I believe you guys, if you have not shared yours, please hold it up. I think we've come to the end of our paleo art gallery. I don't see any more. This is a great one to end on. Julia, thank you for rendering this. Uh, I'm sure this is a good way to start or to end our um our paleo art gallery because I don't know if you guys remember, but all the way at the beginning, that is Julia on the left, old museum friend of mine. I'm glad you're here, Julia. And I'm glad you made that amazing drawing all right i'm gonna take back the uh spotlight for a hot second i'm gonna replace hold on one second there we go uh rebecca christina we have talked a lot very quickly you've answered a fair amount of questions we've talked about the bone wars we have described five of our favorite animals that came out of the bone wars rebecca do you have any final thoughts anything to say before we bid adieu to our friends here 
yeah. in the Dino 101. Yeah, don't throw rocks at your friends when you're working in quarries. How's that for random? You said random. Uh, one other thing that you definitely should do if you did you tell them the paleontology mitigation story that you told me earlier we didn't say that in this room can you just tell us the real quick on that because that was great it's a great idea I love that yeah so we uh, we were doing a water pipeline project here in the monument recently and they had dug a hole and there were some cool rocks down there I wanted to look at so I jumped in the hole and I had an allosaur claw in my hand hidden and I grabbed some mud and held it up and was like oh my god you guys you found a fossil you have have to stop work you have everybody out everybody stop and the guy in the bulldozer jumps out and everybody's white and i'm like getting on to our our maintenance guy who was supposed to be in charge of everything and i i handed it to him and he looks at it and he's like oh what dinosaur and throws it over his shoulder and everybody's just like and i'm trying to get out of the pit like i'm gonna beat him up i'm like what are you thinking and of course i had a face mask on because of covid so luckily nobody could see me smiling underneath it thank goodness because i couldn't hold it together but it was a great way to to prank the poor construction guys and so it made for an interesting rest of the project so what i hear you saying is that we should go on ebay buy some like replica uh like insects and amber and then just find foss or any construction site and just go like toss them in any bone we'll yeah the field I, of actually found, I found a chicken bone <laughs> and i was like i found a bone and they're like oh what do we what do we need to do and i'm like oh it's modern don't worry about it. <laughs> it's a chicken bone that's not the bone, by the way. This is just a random bone on my desk. Here's the chicken. Of course, of course, we have random bones on our desk. You're a paleontologist. There's the oh, there's the claw. Awesome, this is Rebecca. A bone. Yeah. Thank you so much for walking us through the bone wars. I know every single person here. Once quarantine is over, definitely want quarantine. We're kind of trying to do quarantine. You know what I'm saying? In the future times, we're gonna come and visit you actually at Dinosaur National Monument. Check out the quarry. Thank you so much for joining us, Christina. Do you have any final words before we bid adieu to our friends tonight? Yes, uh, it's 2021, shoot your shot, wear your mask, get your shot, and do whatever the heck you want with your facial hair, like Marsh and Cope and Dustin Groelich. Thank you, thank you, I knew I knew that was coming. Listen, I just wanna try it for like a couple of weeks, whatever. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming, this is a ton of fun. We've had a big room. Uh, per usual, we do have an after party because you guys have been drinking now heavily for an hour and 10 minutes. I apologize for having Bone being the drinking cue tonight. The, uh, the after party is totally optional. It's not attached to Atlas Obscure at all. If you want the link, slide into my, don't slide, dive head first into my DMs on either Twitter or Instagram. I will send you the link to the after party. If you've been to the after party before, it is the same link every week. So leave me alone for that. Um, but for now, you guys, I don't care if you're asking questions, searching for dinosaurs, are using a miniature scooper to dig out scoops of ice cream to make ice cream cookies out of girls. I already fucked that up. I fucked it up. Let me try that one more time. Or using a miniature scooper to make tiny Girl Scout cookie ice cream sandwiches. That is what I meant to say, which I think would be a really fun idea for the summer. Mini ice cream. Girl, I can't even, the words. Okay, I love you guys. Thanks. I'm putting that link in the, in the comments for everybody. Cool. Make some, um, make some Girl Scout cookie ice cream sandwiches and then just mail them to us. I'm sure they won't melt. Yeah. It's really good in milkshakes. Really good. Oh, you guys, one last thing. I'm sorry. I'll see you in the after party, but I forgot to tell you this Zoom room never ends. No, the last thing we should probably mention what we're doing next week, which is going to be very fun. Uh, you guys, we have a very, very important event coming up. Some people call it the Super Bowl, but we call it Dino 101's Superb Owls, because obviously we're going to talk about one of the greatest group of dinosaurs that are still alive ever, ever. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, this is our special guest next week, uh, Jess Anderson, who is a certified wildlife rehabilitator. This is a picture of her choking out an eagle that was not behaving. No, she's taking care of an eagle here. Next week, we're going to talk through some of the best owls on the planet. And then your votes are going to determine which is the most superb owl. I'm very, very stoked about this. Christina, I know you're very excited about the burring owls. I love the little burrowing ones. I love the elf one because it's the smallest one of all. All right, we Super. did it. We're, we're only 12 minutes over, usually 15 minutes over. So we can sit here and talk for three minutes. Psych, I'm gonna say bye to you guys. We'll see you in the after party. If not, we will see you next week. I love all of you. Never stop digging. Dinosaurs are the greatest group of animals who've ever existed. <laughs> Quack, 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 quack,